Isaiah chapter 55, the first three verses, will serve as our text for our observance of the Lord's Supper today. Isaiah chapter 55, the first three verses. Ho, everyone who thirst, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear, and come to me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word today. In the big city that I grew up in, it was so big that there was only one ball field in the whole city. How many they have now, I have no idea. But back then, there was only one ball field in the whole town. And I just happened to live just across the street from that one ball field. Now, the distance from our house to the ball field was too far for mom to stand out in the yard and yell at me to come home for supper. But the distance from the house to the ball field, it wasn't far enough for her to go to the trouble, to go out and start the car up and back it out and come pick me up and bring me home. So here's what mom and the other moms in the neighborhood did. They got together and they worked out a plan to call their children, us boys, home when it was supper time. Now, here was the plan. The Rhodes boys got two toots on the car horn. Mom would go out to the car and she'd blow the horn two times and it was time for the Rhodes boys to go home for supper. Now we had some next door neighbors, the Davis family. Tony, you know Joe Davis. You can't forget him. You're trying to, but you can't. <laughs> the Davis boys got three toots. Now why they got more than us Rhodes boys, I don't know. But we'd be playing ball and we'd hear the car horn. Two toots, I'd head home for supper. Three toots, the Davis boys would head home for supper. And that was how we were called home for supper. Well, in our text for today, we have the Lord God through his prophet Isaiah doing essentially the same thing. That is, he's calling people to come home to him and eat what he has prepared for them. So let's look for a few moments at this beautiful and blessed picture of God calling us home for supper. First of all, let's look at his calling to us. To begin with, he calls the dry. In the first part of verse 1, he says, Everyone who thirst come to the waters. This describes all people who do not believe in and belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are dry on the inside. Their hearts and souls are thirsty. They're walking around spiritually dehydrated. And because they are, the Lord calls to them to come to Him and have their thirst quenched and satisfied. And then we see that He calls the destitute. In verse 1, he refers to those who have no money. Now let's get on the same page here, the page that the Lord is on. The Lord here is speaking in spiritual terms. He's talking about real wealth. He's talking about eternal riches. He's not talking about man's temporary wealth and riches. This describes all people whose spiritual bank account is empty. People whose spiritual purses and pocketbooks contain nothing but lint and dust. People whose souls are broke, bankrupt, and busted. 
They may have billions of man's monopoly money, but they're walking around with not one penny of God's real spiritual money. Therefore, they're destitute. And because they are, the Lord calls them to come to Him. And then we note the Lord calls the disappointed. In verse 2, He points to people who spend money for what is not bread and people who spend their wages for what does not satisfy. Have you ever bought anything that didn't satisfy you? Every one of us could raise our hand on that one. We've all purchased things and we were disappointed in what we purchased. Didn't turn out to be what we wanted or needed. And how did it make us feel? Happy and glad? Of course not. It made us feel disappointed, disillusioned, and disheartened. Well, that's exactly how a lot of people view life these days. They are filled with disappointment and disillusionment at life. Why? Because the things of this world which they've bought into have not brought them real satisfaction and peace. The things of this world have not turned out to be what they needed. And because of that, they're disappointed. And because of their disappointment, the Lord calls them to come to Him. Well, that's His calling to us, to come home to Him for supper. But now let's look at our coming to Him. Our coming to Him. And when we come to Him, here's what we get from Him. First of all, we get that which is appetizing. Verse 2, the Lord says, listen diligently to me and eat what is good. Now when I listened and heard those two car horns, went home, ate supper, was it any good? Was it tasty? Was it delicious? Are you kidding me? It was mama's cooking. Mama's cooking. You know the kind of meals mama makes. Good ones. Moms don't cook bad meals. Now you can get bad meals at a lot of places, but you don't get bad meals at mama's table. I don't ever remember mom serving me a bad meal. Well, the same is true of the Lord. The Lord's food is always good. Always tasty, always delicious. The Lord always sets a good table and turns out good food. The Lord has never and will never serve you any bad food. And what makes His food so good? Well, He tells us in John 6, 55, He says, My flesh is food. And then He says, My blood is is drink. Do you see? He is the food and drink at the meal He calls us to. He's the meal. He's the menu. He's the food and drink that our soul needs in order to live. The special of the day at the Lord's table is always the Lord Himself. And then at the Lord's table we get abundance. Abundance. In the last part of verse 2, the Lord says, Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Now, when I would go home and eat supper, there was always an abundance. There was always plenty. Now, we had the basics. We had taters. Fried, stewed, creamed taters. We had beans. White ones, brown ones, green ones, polka dot ones. We had beans. We had meat. Bologna, hamburger, ham, whatever. And we had bread. Cornbread, loaf bread, rolls. We had the basics. Meat, taters, beans, and bread. But we always had plenty. We always had plenty. And when we were eating, my mom never said to me, Mike, stop eating. You've had enough. You only eat so many taters. You only eat so many beans, and I'm counting them. 
You only get so many pieces of bologna. You only get so many pieces of cornbread. No, mom never said that to me. In fact, she always told me to eat more. Keep eating. My point is we always had an abundance. And it's the same way with our Lord. Remember now, he's the food and drink. He's the menu, and because of that, his table never runs out and never runs short of what we need. Because of that, he will never stop us from eating and drinking of him. All you can eat applies at the Lord's supper table, for he is the supper. And at his table, you'll never hear one, someone say to you, I'm sorry, but we've run out of that. No, that never happens at his table. For he is the meal, and it's always filled with abundance. And then at the Lord's table, you get assurance. Verse 3, the Lord tells us that if we come to him, he will make an everlasting covenant with us. Whenever I was walking home, headed for supper, did I ever wonder to myself, you know, I wonder if mom really has supper ready or not. I wonder if she's just messing with me. I wonder if she's just pulling a trick on me and getting me to come home and quit playing ball. I wonder if she's really got supper ready. Or did I ever wonder, you know, that food mom has on the table, I wonder if she put any poison in it. I wonder if it's clean. I wonder if it's healthy. Hmm, I wonder. Did I ever do that? Of course not. Why not? Because she was my mom and I was her child. She and I had that covenant. And it gave me complete assurance about going home and eating what she had on the table. Well, my friend... You have that same assurance and confidence when you come to the Lord's table for his supper. Why? Because he is your father and you are his child. This is the everlasting covenant he's referring to here. You come to him and you know what you're going to get. You get him. You get his grace, his mercy, and his forgiveness. You get his joy and peace and satisfaction. You get his love. And you'll taste it at every meal. For he is everlasting food. I can hear the car horn right now. Going off twice. And I can see my mom standing there. Arms folded making sure I got home. And I remember walking in the kitchen and sitting down and eating and enjoying her good supper. A good memory. A good memory. But you know what? As good a table and as good a food as my mama set and fed me, it cannot compare to this one. It cannot compare to this one. For remember the menu. It's him. His body. His blood. On an old rugged cross. This is the Lord's Supper. And he is tooting his horn to you this morning. He's signaling you to come home. He's telling you it's supper time. I've got it all ready. I've prepared it. And that was his kitchen right there. It's all ready. All you have to do is come and eat and enjoy. It's time. It's time.
It's supper time.